research relates to disasters and poverty and marginalization. And that relates to Australia, but also around the world in poorer countries also. I trained as an architect and loved it. And very early on in my career, I went to work on a low-income housing program in a very large slum. And it became very obvious that the issues were not to do with houses so much as to do with fairness, inequality, poverty, poorer people not being listened to, societal problems. And it was really at that point I decided to work in aid. The number one thing in aid right now that's needed, it's very simple actually, is for aid agencies to listen better. We call that assessments. Assessments always need to be stronger, better. Also, aid needs to take more time. After the immediate life saving, it's actually working with people together as partners, as collaborators, not, as, not if you like, as saviors. I was editor of the 2016 World Disasters Report, and that's from the Red Cross. It's their annual global publication launched around the world. And this year's theme related to resilience. We worked with 55 people from around the world, mostly practitioners, people working in some of the hardest places right now of conflict and of disaster and of refugee movements. And we asked them to say, what does it really mean to enact resilience in some of the hardest places around? So what does urban resilience mean? Well, look around us. We're in a city right now, a big, dense city with buildings, stuff going on, lives. But it's the issues you don't see under the surface, the social, the political, all the interactions. Resilience is about combining the social, the political, with the buildings, with the people, to be stronger when bad things happen and afterwards to be able to recover faster. Professor David Sanderson's uh, background, his knowledge of the sector, his knowledge of uh, natural disasters made him an inspired choice to lead this, uh, this whole process. And the evidence of this report shows that if we do things differently, we can save money and we can save lives, most importantly. So it's an absolutely critical contribution to our understanding, which will result in changed practice and changed approaches to the way that we prepare for and respond to natural disasters in the future. We have challenging times now, but it's going to get more difficult. We have cities growing a million people a week. Climate change is upon us and caused by us in part. And also we have the biggest refugee movement since World War II. But none of these things are inevitable and we can take action to reduce massively or even prevent a lot of these things from happening. And that's what excites me.